Well, guys, welcome back to the studio, Brian, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and I know you guys are itching, just itching to get back to this project and get this Cobra underway. So I'm not going to do a lot of uh, chatting, not a lot of intro on this one. You guys have seen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is all about bringing this snake alive. So let's get to it. Nothing to it but to do it. Check it out. And first things first, guys, in order to get this little ditty done, just going to place my stencil up there with a couple magnets. Now remember, a lot of this guy was done on the fly, folding that stencil to make sure that out of the way. And uh, so my lines don't line up perfectly from the stencil to the project. So I'm just using a little bit of masking tape here, guys, ripping it where I need to to make sure that it lines up with what's been previously painted. And I like to take my masking tape, guys, and rip it right down the center. And that allows it to bend a little bit easier. And I'm just masking off the belly portion of the snake. Now remember, as they don't line up perfectly, guys... I'm going to take my pencil and just quickly draft out a line, not that you can see it because my noggin's in the way, but that's what I did, and then cutting it with an X-Acto knife and making sure these line up, guys, and just using my masking tape to make sure those joins are nice and sweet, and that's how it's done, at least that's how I do. Now, haha. <laughs> the easy breezy method for doing snakeskin, yeah, guys. That's it. That's all. It's just screen. Regular run-of-the-mill screen. You put it in your doors. You put it in your windows. Well, now you put it on your gas tanks. <laughs> all right. So, as I was uh, chatting with you guys about in earlier videos, um, the reason why there's only just a fog of white over top of that snake and I didn't blast in with whites is because the process I'm doing for the back half of this snake, guys, is first going in with my darks and just kind of chiseling out a pattern for the snake so I kind of gave him a bit of a diamond back pattern so I'm just making sure that's all defined and then I will go in with my highlights and just start ever so carefully dude this is a super thinned out white um, and dudettes <laughs> and just mapping some highlights and uh, you can go back and forth as much as necessary, guys, till you're happy with what you got for texture. But really, how easy is that? Man, it should be a hack video all in itself. Um, now I'm just going in with a little bit of dark skies and just toning it back, toning it back. And what we've effectively done by having the underlaying tone just a little bit darker than the white that we blasted over top is now we've got some real cool scale lines in there with minimal work. Well, still a bit of work, but man, trying to paintbrush all that detail, which by the way is what I had to do on the other projects because the snakes were just getting too small for the screen material. It just wasn't going to cut it for size. So yeah, there's that too, guys, but there you go, another quick rendition. We'll get into the third portion of the body wrapping around the staff here, guys, and we'll do a little bit more real time so you can see how I do. And again, to reiterate, mapping in my little bit of my dark pattern, which just happens to be some diamonds with some dots in the middle, mapping that out with a little bit of dark because I do have a little bit of a white, not very much, underneath this. And then now going in with some highlights. Giving it a bit of a wash tone, guys. Trying to keep it concentrated a little bit more to where the highlight is. But there you have it. Pretty easy snake tone. Just saving that dark tone underneath. Yup. Pretty cool, hey guys. And then you can knock it back, which is what I'm doing. Knocking it back with a little bit of dark. And this is my blue purple brown mixture guys that we were using in the other ones this is a very common mixture for me i will use it repeatedly on all my projects guys it's how i do my sort of black without using black it's a very nice uh transparent color that gives you nice transitions i find when you're using just an opaque black you get a real opaque dot pattern no matter how much you thin it out so this is uh 
my opaque deep purple guys one drop of that to every one drop of my transparent rowney blue which is actually an fw ink and for every one drop of each of those guys i'm using five drops of my transparent fw sepia same thing as the rowney blue it's a transparent ink and this is how i get my real nice fades and blends without using an opaque black but still good at blacker than black you know what i'm saying guys i think you know what i'm saying i'm just punching in some final highlights overall and there you go um pretty easy i don't see why you couldn't do something similar yourself so along we go guys masking out the belly portion of this dude so that we can proceed pretty easy um sometimes you can bend this tape around corners other times not so much now you can bend this going around that type of a curve but i do find you start to put a lot of strain on this masking tape and you can have some lifting or pullback problems where an hour or two you look back over at your masking tape and it's moved yeah not a good thing so rather than err on that i err on the side of caution and uh here we go size representation screen metal screen um i don't even know where i got this from sorry guys i'm gonna be no help on that i've had it for years and years and years probably picked it up at a thrift store along my travels i uh do frequent them thrifty stores quite often <laughs> being the thrifty artist that i am i choose not to call myself a starving artist even though it's pretty apparent that most of us are Thrifty just sounds a little better. All right, guys, now I'm moving the screen and grooving with this screen to get the right angle of scales. I wasn't so worried about this on the back portion of the body because it was far away and distant. Well, this is right up in your face, so I definitely want to make sure that we pay a little more attention to the way the scales are moving with the body of the snake. And that's it. Slow and steady. Mapping out small sections, making sure I'm happy with it. And check out that effect. Now, keeping in mind that I have that diamond back pattern. And I know diamond back is a rattler, not a cobra. I don't want all the emails. I don't need the comments. <laughs> this snake is my own creation. It's uh, a little gnarlier than an actual cobra. I've given him quite a few more gnarly little teeth in there to add for the effect as well as pointier eyebrows and nostril regions again just to make this snake a little gnarlier and the diamond back pattern guys well it works good with the hood of the cobra kind of giving them that eye effect so i'm just using that diamond back pattern to cover up that screen stenciled area where it just didn't quite mesh <laughs> see what i did there dad joke on with the show on we go soldiering on airbrush wielding warrior of fortune here guys and my fortune is diminishing the longer this takes so we can't do it all real time I apologize i know a lot of you guys like it you can slow it down if you like but for me we got a blast on through this, guys. Finish chiseling out my darks, and then back in with my whites. And we'll do a bit of real time. All right, all right, you convinced me. Twist my rubber arm, I got it, I got it. You guys like the real time. So this is it. Knowing where my big scales for the face converge, well, that was a big word, with my little tiny scales from the rest of the body I'm just going and giving some little highlights to these areas some of them are little tiny dots some of them are more of linear lines here's some dots no here's a line more lines here are some 
And take your time, guys. This is where those little details start to sing. Is by not putting on too much paint. <laughs> Odd how that works. Hey, guys, you really want to sing? Just don't overload it with too much paint. And, uh... That's where I'm at. That's how I do. We're going to finish off the rest of this little area here. And move up to the top of the head, guys. And just fill in some of these areas that didn't get tackled with the white highlights through the screen. And eventually we're going to bring this into joining the bigger scales from the face that you can still see that are mapped out from my hand-cut stencil. And uh, to do those, guys, I think... I think we're gonna break out. Oh, oh, check it out. Little mistake. Q tip. Handy little eraser. Use my finger to quickly dry it off so it doesn't sit there. And now to tackle these bigger scales, guys, I'm just gonna go ahead with my handy little stencil here and hit the front edge of every little scale. Yup, every little scale. <laughs> Nobody said this was a sprint. Nope, this is a marathon. Peoples, we are in it for the long haul. So, tedious it may be, repetitive for sure, but this is how it's done, or at least this is how I do. And now just getting a couple little areas right next to the eye, so I'm using that tiny little, little cutout that you can see there. And that just gives me some definition to some scales next to the eye. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of this, guys. It's very repetitive, but I'm moving around that stencil, trying to find the best area that works for what I am trying to achieve. Don't get so focused on getting it done that you're just like repeat, repeat, repeat without changing size and shape and even moving that stencil just a half a degree right or left changes that shape, guys, and makes it so it's not so... Well, you'd be surprised at how quick the human eye picks up on repeating patterns. Next time, have a good look at that... uh wood paneling in your grandfather's basement next to the old wine cabinet. I know you raided that cabinet once or twice. That wood paneling, dude, there's like seven different areas and the rest are repeat. Believe me. Believe me. And, uh, <laughs> now that I've said it, you'll never look at wood paneling the same. All right, guys, let's get on with this. Moving on. Soldiering on, stenciling on, I don't know what else to tell you, other than bit by bit, inch by inch, life's a cinch, mile by mile. Uh, so something about it's hard to smile? Nah, that ain't right. Inch by inch, life's a cinch. Yeah. Ah. Yard by yard, life's very hard. Yar, we got her. <laughs> I knew it was in there somewhere. Brain box has too many facts. Sometimes they get jarbled. <laughs> We're going to speed on. And again, notice how I'm not using that same area. It's getting moved around quite a bit. And now, freehanding in some other tones and just giving little highlights to all of the ones I just blasted in. And there's going to be a bit of this, guys. I kind of bring up my highlight until I know that piece is nice and bright. And then I knock it back with my darks. And then I might bring it up and just keep that highlight a little bit more smaller, relegated to a smaller area. And then go back in with my darks. And this is how I achieve it, guys. Um, if you do it differently, I'm happy to hear your suggestions. I'm here to learn as much as I'm here to teach, guys, and just because I do it one way, I know this is not the only way, and man, there may be faster ways. I would love to know a faster way. <laughs> Hit the 1-800 number right now if you do have a faster way to paint snake scales. I know we rock that body with the screen, but once we get into these facial areas... 
Yep, this is about as fast as I can get it. And it's pretty darn slow. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Pretty soon, after we're done with this white, and I'll go back in with my dart. Dart chiseling. I know I've said that a few times. But here we go, guys. Uh, the reason why I do it so slow and back and forth, and you see me start in one area, coming back to another area, adding some more white over here, kind of going back, adding some white over there, is because I'm building it up slowly, guys. There is a 3D model to this snake, but it's in my brain. <laughs> There's no computer over here, guys. I'm just figuring it all out as I go. And the only way to do that is to build it on up nice and slow so as you see with the inside of the mouth i start with bigger shapes a little looser and then i start tightening up tightening up smaller and smaller hey why not bring in my original stencil and bring back some of those darks you can do it whenever you want this is what they're there for <laughs> this is why i spend the time and that just remaps that mouth uh, I was getting a little lost with all my white, and I wasn't too sure where it was supposed to end. I brought it a little too far, and that's okay, guys. We're just going to work with it. We'll take it back a little bit, and we'll use that as now inside of the mouth. Like it never happened. <laughs> Magic! <laughs> and oh, listen to that snake hiss. Man, that's hard on the ears. And yeah, I've been doing this for hours. No filters, no fast forward, no volume switch to crank that from a 14 down to a three. No, this is what I put up with. It's not all fun and games being an airbrush artist. Some of the dust pulls we reach here, guys. Yeah, I'm just glad the dog's outside for this one. All right, you catch my drift? The, the drift of air vibrating against the stencil making everyone's ears bleed <laughs> I'm having way too much fun now right back to work alright guys so when you see me with my smaller brush here guys this is my Iwata HPB it's a smaller cup size and a smaller needle nozzle size I run my HPC as well and I pretty much run them interchangeably guys having a bit of spraying issues here so off to the side pull her back let that paint come through and clean that needle i just use my fingertips guys but you can use paper towels sponges lots of way to do it but yeah big cup whites and so if you're wondering what brush it is right now it's darks oh and the paint i guess you could probably yeah all right redundant redundancy oh and in this case is just simply a result of poor planning <laughs> Maybe I should be writing scripts for these. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be another I'd add another couple hours to the process. I'm not ready for that. No, nope, we're free. We're free balling it. <laughs> Once again, going commando. Oh yeah. Alright guys, now that, that whoa, big brush. Now that, that dark was done, we're back in with our whites. <laughs> See, I, I just told you. Oh, now we're back in with our darks. Little brush. See, there's a reason why I told you that. <laughs> Fast forward, flying through the final parts of these scales, guys, and it could get a little confusing. So there you have it. And now we peel the tape to get at the belly of the beast and finish this sucker once and for all. Again, with a stencil, guys, just to quickly map it out and give me my definition for each of these little belly scales, whatever you want to call them. I'm sure there's a technical name in, in Latin, and I probably learned it somewhere along my travels, but it escapes me today. And I'm nowhere near the Google. Well, just too lazy, really. All right, guys, on with the show, and repetitive is how we go more scales so just using those stencils hitting just the front edge and then bringing it all together with a little bit of transparent white easy breezy 
beautiful Cobra Girl. <laughs> oh, the dad jokes are flowing. The dad jokes are flowing. What can I say? I like cheese. All right, chiseling in with some darks. Some definition to the bottoms. Bring it up to the tops. This is my same color, guys. My blue, purple, brown mixture. I like to map it all out, sort of black and white. And I say black and white loosely. I'm not really using black. So I guess it would actually be white and grays. And then I tend to go in with my colors very transparently over top and build it up slowly, much as I do everything. That's all I do, guys. I hope you can learn a little something from this one. Just keeps on knocking it back until he's happy with it, is how he does. And now, big belly. So we're going to do this one in portions. I'm not going to try to tackle the big belly scale all at once. I'm going to do the edge. Do a couple of them. See if I like the way it's flowing, then move to one side, and then move back, and build it up slowly, guys. Again, this is out of the imagination. I do have some snake reference, but not in this exact position, and definitely not this exact dude. <laughs> I would be terrified if this was a real snake. But here we go, guys. On with the show. The show must go on. The snake must slither on <laughs> yeah that works and no that was not a Harry Potter pun hello <laughs> oh the cheese runs strong with this one. Oh man <laughs> Luke I am your farmer father farmer <laughs> Cheese. Go cheese. Boba Fett to cheese. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Back to work. Feel free to mute me at any point. <laughs> I would not blame you, nor would I put it past you. All right, guys. Um, That's kind of where we're at. Cheese factor is high, and the snake is getting dealt with. Piece by piece, little by little. And here we are going back in with our dark skies and just chiseling it out little by little. Adding those shadows, making sure that it's got that 3D wrap around. And just back and forth until I'm happy, bud. And I got the tones that I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. And that's how I do. Well, at least that's how I done did it here, guys. Lots of different ways. This is how it got achieved on this round. I think this is going to be the last for the highlights with the airbrush. At this stage, guys, I'm going to punch in these last little areas just to get those teeny tiny little specks of reflection that just make it look a little bit wet in those darker areas. And when you look at those snakes, I know they ain't. I know they ain't, but they always look it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve here, guys. And uh, once we're done with our airbrush here, we're going to put it away for, well, put it to the side. Really, we're not going to put it away. It's just going to sit there waiting for me because then I'm going to grab that paintbrush. And I'm going to start doing some detail that way. And once I'm done with my paintbrush, we pick back up that airbrush we toss to the side. And we blend it all out nicely. And I don't know why I always tell you what we're going to do before we do it. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. All right. And uh, getting real close. Real close. Last little bits of highlights here. Papers being a bit of a bugger. Not laying down. Move the magnet. Problem solved. Oh, yeah. And that'll conclude our airbrushing session for the ride. So please buckle in. And get ready for some paintbrush action. Because what a wild ride it is. Alright, I lied. It's the complete opposite. Uh, I get bored watching myself sometimes. But you guys are here to learn, so let's teach ya. I've got myself a fairly transparent white 
thinned out and I am not trying to outline each scale. I'm just giving the front and top edges of the scales just a little bit of a reflection line. And so what you saw me do just there, guys, was sometimes the white gets a little bit too bright. Uh, it's just a little bit too much. So I'll just go with my finger and pull it in the direction that I want that highlight to sort of fade to. And it actually helps in bringing a nice little fade and highlight to the top edge of some of these little scales. And you'll see me do that a few times where I just get it just a little too bright and I just want to knock it back a little bit. So I just use my finger, pull it in that direction that you want it to go. And as the brush gets a little thin, as the paint starts to dissipate on the tip then I start doing some darker areas and then again once I get that first dab of white on there it's pretty bright so sometimes I'll just dab my finger and tone it back a little bit just bring it back a little bit and that's how I get some of these details guys and over and over <laughs> we go <laughs> Round and around we go. Where she stops. No, well, we stop when she's done. Alright, I guess that didn't really apply. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. E for effort. Alright, and with the thought of not trying to outline this thing, guys, keep in mind, nothing that I do is one solid color. You see me getting a little brighter to one edge and letting it fade back to the other edges. Same with this little interior flap of skin. Work in the middle and letting that fade out to the edges. Using my finger, and I can go back in with my airbrush and tone some of these, which I will. Which I will. I will tone them back if they got a little harsh. And Speedy Gonzales to the rescue, and we're just going to blast through a bunch of these guys. I think you kind of get the gist. I don't know if I could explain it again and again and again, but this is all I do. Back and forth until I'm happy, building my highlights. Slowly building it up. Till I'm happy. And that's how I do, guys. I don't try to rush it. I'm also mixing a little bit, so this isn't always pure white. Sometimes I go in and I use super thin paint, which gives me a different brush stroke rather than a super opaque white. Sometimes I'll go in and I'll mix that with a little bit of my gray just to tone it down so it's still opaque, but not as bright, and everything in between, guys. Just play around with it, have some fun, but pushing these little tiny details is how the game is won. Man, Dr. Seuss would be proud. I'm telling you, that's how I grew up. <laughs> All right. And now in with the darks. Now again, this is my blue-purple-brown mixture. It's not an actual black, but it reads as a black, and you can use it in different, again, consistencies. Use it a little thicker for some areas, thin it out, and it gives you a different type of brush stroke, something that's a little more uh, soft, I suppose. And I'm just working those details, man. Work it on in there, taking that airbrush. I believe this is white. Yep. Yeah, we're blasting in some of these highlights to get some of these brightest areas. We're getting real close here, guys. Real, real close. I hope you guys learned a little something. Please drop me a line. Let me know. Did I teach you something today? Some good dad jokes or just some cheesy humor? <laughs> Probably the latter. All right. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, I know a lot of this stuff can't all be covered I know a lot of the stuff I take for granted so if there's something I missed if there's something you missed hit me up I will help you out if I can this is what I am here for my friends my broskies and sisters last little bit of darks just a little bit of wash tones to bring that all back there you go a little too bright Tucking them in. And this is where I start to really love it. 
This is where I really start to feel it. Man, she's got some teeth on her, don't she? Jeez, quit staring at me. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, let me know. Drop me a comment. Tell me your thoughts. And in the very next video, we will start addressing the tiniest amounts of color. Just to give a little more realistic life to this little beast that we've created. This sly little serpent. Alright guys, that's it for that one. Um, Next one, we'll tackle a little bit of the color. And that should be that. Um, maybe a little bit of bonus coming on down the line, but you'll have to stay tuned for that one, guys, and, uh, as always, you know how I do, like, follow, subscribe, thanks for coming along for the ride, cheers, and be sure to check out those other videos, guys, we've got airbrushing for beginners, we've got airbrushing hacks, and plenty of projects. I'm a busy boy. All right, peoples. Cheers.